Welcome back Spartans, Toby Wan Shinobi here, and in this video I'm going to cover the best strategies for winning the Stronghold game type in Halo Infinite Ranked Multiplayer. In the future I'll be covering each ranked game type individually, so if you want to learn the best strategies for each game type, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerts when the videos come out. Look, I'll be honest and say that I had a really rough time with Strongholds for a while. Even playing with a coordinated team of three, I felt like I just couldn't figure out why we were losing. It felt like we were capturing more zones, killing more enemies, but yet we rarely won on Strongholds. I'm a bit embarrassed because it took me so long to determine the key strategies because they're very simple, but oh well. I'm sharing this video in hopes that some of you are in the same boat I was and could use a little help in determining the main objectives within the objective. Yada da mean. <laughs> okay, so let's dive in. I'm going to break this video into three general rules that you're going to want to follow 80% of the time while playing Strongholds in Halo Infinite. Rule 1, hold B and don't give it up. Rule 2, don't push enemy occupied zones alone. And Rule 3, control spawns by not overextending. So I'll start by saying the simplest and most effective rule that I can give you that might make the most difference in strongholds is this. Hold the B zone with the majority of your team and don't leave it unless necessary. That means you want to choose two zones and one of them is going to be B. So yeah, don't do A and C combined unless under special circumstances and I'll cover those circumstances in a little bit. Let me explain why holding B is so important. So far, on all three stronghold maps that we have, the B zone is either the shortest distance from the spawn point or the easiest to defend while supporting from another zone or vice versa. If you die while defending B, there's a 90% chance that you're going to spawn a few seconds run from either A or C, and if you're spawning there, that means the least amount of enemies should be on the zone nearest to you, if any at all. This is because Halo Infinite's spawning system does its best to spawn you opposite of the majority of the enemies. That means if you can maintain the hold on B for the entire game, you'll be capturing either A or C off your spawn with very little effort while running back to B to support your team. In fact, oftentimes if you died trying to defend B and you still have a couple players alive at B, it's usually better to skip capturing the zone you spawn at and head straight to B to support your remaining team members and not lose the B zone. Your spawning team can capture the zone you skipped or you can run back and get it after securing B. If your team can hold B the entire game, you're pretty much guaranteed to win. There are a few times when it's acceptable to temporarily grab A and C, and that's when the enemy team is very well set up at B, or has power weapons there, and you just can't make headway pushing it together. You can cap A and C and get one or two of them to leave their positions to maintain zone advantage, and then rotate back to B to fight it out. Also, when power weapons come up and you're gonna give up B temporarily, you can rotate to the next zone, to keep continuing to get time and split up their team, you know, so they're looking at A and C now, and then you can push B and get it back with power weapons. And the last time that you might want to consider taking A and C is when the game is very close and it's nearing its end at the 250 point mark. You know, your team has 230, their team has 230, and they have B and they're holding it well. You should probably rotate A, C, because if you get wiped once trying to push B, you're probably gonna lose the game. Uh, so you wanna rotate over to A or C, split their attention, get guys split up at B, and then basically you just wanna kinda keep rotating with your team and capturing zones and try to keep that zone advantage. So the last piece of advice that I'm gonna give you in this section is once you capture B and your team is at B, keep numbers on B. Uh, I, I always see this happen, it's a knee-jerk reaction. Immediately, the enemy team that you just wiped at B will now spawn at, say, C, and your whole team goes, oh shoot, we just lost C and A, they've got two zones, let's all run over to A and capture that one. And they're going to leave one person at B to defend the zone himself. Uh, meanwhile, the horde of enemies that you just wiped off of B is going to push back to B, kill that teammate, and all you can do is send some flowers for his gravestone because you just abandoned him and you should feel really bad. So seriously, in the end, keep numbers on B, at least two guys on B at all times, preferably three. If you need to go support someone to help them capture a zone, that's fine. Stay on the outskirts of B. Don't push all the way into the zone. Make sure you can get back to B to help defend that. Okay, let's quickly go over some setups. Now, in my personal opinion, I would say that the best setups are as follows. 
On live fire, holding zones A and B is best because enemies have to run across an open field from C to capture B, and they're easily killed while you're in cover and have someone supporting them from the A sandbags. You can pretty easily sneak into the backside of B from A because there's a much shorter distance without cover there. On recharge, I personally think that holding zones B and A is ideal, with a player keeping overwatch from gold attic or maintenance bay. The rest of your team should be set up at top A and whirlpool dam to defend both zones. The player at gold attic can be putting damage on enemies pushing into A and B from control tower while his other teammates finish him off. So it's really important to keep that guy alive at top gold because he can be doing a lot of damage for both the teammates at A and the guys pushing into B. B on the zone is really important because it's very difficult to capture and it's easily seen from a lot of different areas on the map. So once you have it, really, really try to defend it. On streets, I would say that B and C is the best setup. At C, you can hold top C balcony and hit enemies coming into B, and you can also hit enemies pushing down to courtyard or rocket stairs. And from B, you can shoot down into the C courtyard and hit enemies trying to push into C. B is a bit tricky to defend here because of the grenade spam, so capture the zone and then get out of the suicide room to defend it. Play the outskirts and keep at least two people on B at all times. Just a quick mention, my favorite way to retake B on this map is by supporting my teammates from the top of PD station. You can actually jump up to that little balcony up there and see down into B, all the way down to the C driveway actually. So it's a really great place to support teammates and retake B from. Okay, rule number two is do not push zones alone. And more specifically, I mean zones that you know nothing about zones that don't have teammates on them that are possibly occupied by an enemy. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna push into that zone, find out there's two guys there, they're gonna kill you, and, and then you're gonna be stuck in the spawn screen watching your teammates get obliterated because now they're at a disadvantage when, with one last player, and those guys who just killed you are gonna be pushing the advantage. So when you spawn in, look to your left, look to your right, see if teammates are on a zone, if they aren't, then wait for your other teammate to spawn in and go push a zone together, because that way if you die in the fight, but your teammate survives and takes the zone, it's not a total waste of time, your death was not in vain. A less obvious benefit to pushing zones together is that if two of you push a zone and you both die, at least you're on the same spawn cycle, so that you'll come in together and you'll be able to push again to another zone and hopefully with better success. The last rule is this, control spawns by not overextending. Keep your team contained to your two thirds of the map. If you have two zones and a good setup, don't push for a triple cap. You might secure the triple cap for an extra 10 total seconds, but it's going to cost you a lot more in the long run. Your team won't be able to support each other because you'll be too split up, and you'll give up your defensible position at B by spreading your team too thin. The spawns will become erratic, you don't know where the enemy's spawning, you don't know where you're going to spawn, and it's just too difficult to coordinate again. When you stay within your boundaries, you ensure that the other team continues to spawn in an expected area, which allows you to set up a good defense to prevent them from coming to B or your other zone. You can also acquire power weapons better this way by knowing what routes the enemy is going to take from their spawn to those power weapons. When your team is alive and teammates are not overextending, it makes it very easy to work as a team and set up an excellent defense. All right guys, so that's it. Those are my strategies for winning more games in the Strongholds game type in Halo Infinite Ranked Multiplayer. If you have some strategies, tips, tricks that you've used in Strongholds, please, please, please share your ideas, share your thoughts, we would love to hear them. Or if you have like something you really struggle with in Strongholds, share that as well and maybe the shinobi crew can help you out uh you know respond to that and give you some feedback or an idea of how to solve that problem so if you want to see more content like this i'll be posting on a weekly basis i'll be uploading videos on how to win each type of objective in halo infinite ranked multiplayer also just overall strategies tips tricks you name it i'm going to be posting videos on a weekly basis and it would really 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 help me if you would subscribe to the channel and like the videos because that just gives me motivation to make my content that much better which i'm really trying to do so thank you very much for tuning in i really appreciate it and i'll see you next week shinobi out